Hey YouTube, it's Brian. I uh, thought I would do an update on all four of my saltwater tanks um, and kind of go through those today. Um, so uh, not a lot to say ahead of time except thanks for watching, thanks for all your support. If you're looking for uh, good deals on Southern Delight fish food, go to our website aquaticsupportsystems.com and you can purchase uh, um, any of the uh, foods in the Southern Delight line, including marine mix, uh, which is uh, made especially for saltwater tanks, and uh, veggie krill, nano krill, and a few others that uh, you can use in saltwater tanks as well. That being said, let's go ahead and uh, start with the update here. I'm going to show you all four tanks and take you through what's been going on. All right, we're going to start today's video with the Red Sea Reefer 200 XL. This is a cube shaped tank. Um, I believe it's two feet by two feet by two feet. If I'm not mis if I'm mistaken there, it's close to it. But as you can see, this is a, a tank that I've got set up. If you've watched my prior videos, you know this, but it's anemone only tank. And I've got basically a bunch of uh, rose bubble tip anemones and uh, some uh, rock flower anemones in here. And then um, six I believe right now there's six clownfish in here, um, just your basic Ocellaris. Um, I started with seven when they were small. One of them did die with uh, due to aggression um, a few months back, but this tank's been set up about a year and a quarter, year and a half, something like that. Uh, there's also some sexy shrimp. You can see a few of them right there in the rock flowers. Um, and there's some anemone clown. Anemone crabs, sorry. There's one back here. Sorry, the filter I've got on here does weird things when I zoom in and out because uh, with the iPhone it switches from one camera to the other. There's three lenses on the iPhone 13. Here's some of the rock flowers. A little bit of diatom issue going on in this tank as well as some of my other tanks right now as well. But uh, this one right here, this is about the biggest one. It's 12 to 15 inches all the way around. Um, one of them here really shows the bubble tips compared to the rest. I'm not sure why that is. They're all bubble tips, but for whatever reason, they're mostly just with the long tentacles. I've heard that has to do with the lighting. I don't know. I'm not really worried about it. I kind of like the long tentacles. The goal here is just to have one big blob of... Uh, of NEMS. Um, I keep um, trying to get some to fill in this front area and it just never seems to work for a while. Like you can see this one's really closed up today but when it's out um, the area, open area, is less. Um, you can see there's some felonia issues, bubble, algae, whatever you want to call it. Um, but um, yeah every time, mo most of these came from one NEM that I bought several years ago and it's just split over time in another tank. Moved them all into here when I set this tank up and uh, added a couple more to try to fill in this area but uh, it just hasn't seemed to work. But overall this is a, a fun tank. It's right in my office where I work. It's right behind my desk so uh, I can just turn around for a little stress relief and, and watch the tentacles flow in the, in the current. Um, the other tank that's in this office is my Reefer 525XL. This is about a, I'm just gonna peek. Um, the total system is 139 gallons, so um, that's with the sump. Um, this is my SPS tank. If you've watched my prior videos, you've seen progress on it. I've taken a huge step backwards. I recently, in the last couple of months, had a major problem and I lost almost all of the SPS. Um, if you pay close attention to my videos, you'll see that uh, most of the corals in here, as far as the SPS ones at least, are, are no longer there, or if they're still in here, they're very bad looking, if not dead. What had happened was I tried a regiment that, uh, um, w uh, well, I'm not going to get into all the details, but basically I overdosed aminos to the point where my my uh, phosphates were at 0.39, I believe, and it just killed off um, all of the SPS. They couldn't keep up, and it, it was just nasty. 
So, um, lessons learned, um, dosing additives, especially in a, how do you say it, um, overdosing type of fashion probably isn't that good of a thing to do, especially with SPS. But um, anyway, we're starting over, as you can see, I've got a few frags here, just started with some inexpensive ones from my local fish store. Um, also bought a few from the Tidal Gardens Reef to Reef, uh, whatever they call it, big time sale that they had a couple weekends ago. I'm waiting for those to arrive. We had a blizzard here, so they're on, to, on hold. But um, yeah, I'll show you kind of what survived and what didn't. Uh, the, my biggest disappointment was, and, and it might bounce back, there's still some red on it, is my Digi right here in the middle. Um, that thing was just growing like mad and I was just really happy about it and I just really liked the color. Um, you can see, um, I forget what this is called here. This one is close to dead, but it might bounce back. Some of these are partially okay and there's one back there that's really dead. I've taken a lot off already, but some of them had a little color left in them. I left just in hopes that maybe they'll bounce back. Um, I lost this, well, there's a little green in it, but I lost the Space Invader Chalice right next to that Scully there. Uh, that was a bummer. I, my other, one of my favorite ones was, it's nothing special, but this Superman that took up this whole area right here. Um, it's pretty much gone, although you can see a little color starting to come through. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um... I did pick up another one. It's over in this frag rack over there um, to replace it if uh, things don't go well. You can see all the L LPS stuff that was in here, um, for the most part, survived it. Um, just the last couple of days, these two scullies are receding a bit, so I'm hoping that there's no problems there. This one looks worse. It looks like it might be dying off. Never had good luck with them, but these two here are doing okay. Um, this uh, candy cane right here, um, it did not do real well. This is supposed to be one of those really bright neon ones. It looks more like this one at this point. But this one here survived totally, no problems. Not sure why. One one thing that I can really scope on that things are starting to recover is this, uh, this Monty cap here, this green one, was almost completely brown about two weeks ago. And now it's starting to gain color again. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but there's a couple of these, and I'm, you know, if you follow my videos, you know that I'm not really good with SPS names and acros and stuff like that. So I don't even know what all these are, but some of these green ones did make it through. Um, I got another Digi right here the other day that is adjusting, um, and we're going to see. I got another green Slimer up at the top there. This coral made it through. Um, I got a couple stylos back there you can see that uh, are brand new, um, so I'm getting those adjusted and some bird's nest back there as well. And then this acro, this kind of just basic green colored one, uh, did okay. It made it. So we'll see what happens, um, but that's this tank. Um, the only other thing that's going on with this tank is I'm having problems with the calcium. I cannot seem to keep it down. I quit dosing completely. I am, uh, as far as two part, um, and I've got Kalkwasser, and um, it must be not using enough calcium so that the, the numbers are still up around 480, 490. Um, I uh, disconnected my Kalkwasser stirrer um, so that I'm not dosing that anymore either to, until the numbers come down, so we'll wait and see how that goes. Um, and kind of go from there. Hopefully this tank can recover. It's a bummer. I had about a year, a little over a year's worth of growth and was really starting to see some good things. Not as much as I had hoped, but uh, still um, some good things. So uh, it's a bummer. It happens, but shame on me for doing what I did. Um, and, um, you know, I learned my lesson. We'll go out here into the TV room. Um, and sorry um show you the 125 this tank i've been having some problems with lately as well um i'm just gonna close this shade here i should have done that before i started um same thing dosing wise um i did the same thing on this tank 
Um, the LPS fared pretty well throughout it. Um, the, the very few pieces of SPS in here, here's a Monty cap. Um, those are green ones, supposed to be. And then up here, they're basically, they had browned out completely. But most of the other corals in this tank did well, except this neon green candy cane here. Although these candy canes did fine. And I'm not sure um, if it has to do with the dosing or if I've got something else going on, but my hammers and frog spawns and everything really have been taking a hit lately. Um, you can see dead, dead heads all over the place. And just the overall health of them, they're not opening up as much and that type of thing. Zoas are doing really good. Um, the Gonoporia, for the most part, this new little red one there um, doesn't seem to want to be opening up much. I may take it off at that point there and lower it. These ones had receded somewhat, but now they're bouncing back and doing real well. Um, one thing I would like advice on if somebody's a real good expert with Euphelia, I've just always struggled for the most part keeping frog spawns and hammers. They'll do really well. Like this one right here with all these dead heads, it was just, you know, thriving. Nice, big, open, bigger than softball size. And then just out of nowhere, it started, started going bad. Anyone has suggestions? I don't know if I'm getting, you know, bacteria or pests or if my parameters just aren't good. Um, let me know, those of you who are successful with Euphelia, what parameters you keep things at as far as alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and then your nutrients, your um, phosphates and nitrates as well. Um, this tank, when it's thriving, it typically has ultra high nitrates, like I'm talking 30, sometimes even 50, sometimes it's been up to 70 with no issues like that's when things are thriving i know that that's super high and you, I, they shouldn't be that high but i don't know if the corals just get accustomed to it and thrive with all that extra nutrients in there but i've been working on getting my nitrates low just because lower because i know that that's just way too high so um over here too just uh some toadstools and leathers things like that um this this big green polyped toadstool leather thingy is doing pretty good as well. Um, the last tank is this one, and this one right now is doing the best out of all my tanks. I'm gonna shut this shade here. Sorry for my videos not being like super awesomely produced or anything either, but um, I just do things on the fly. This is a Red Sea. Um, what is it? A Red Sea E260 Max, which is the type, it's not like the reefer where it's got the sump below. It's got the rear sump, but then you can add the sump below, which is what I did. Um, and this is my oldest reef tank. And um, right now it's doing the best. You can see, you know, I just talked about Euphelia problems over in that tank. This tank, they're doing much better. Um, I've got a few here that aren't really as open as they used to be. Although this big branching piece at the top had recently fallen off. And so I think it just, they're upset. But as you can see throughout this kind of garden here, most of them are pretty open and doing really well. Um, this uh, trumpet coral or candy cane here is doing decent. Um, Pieces keep breaking off and then I have to re-glue them and stuff, but overall it's doing good. It's just the spot that it's in. It could be a lot more open, but it's not. Um, this toadstool typically is really nice. The polyps are receding right now because the shrimp's been on it, but, um, and then the Duncan at the top is doing really well. If you remember my last videos too, um, I had um, green star polyps all over the, um, the return up there. I recently cut a lot of them off and glued them down to the lower part, um, but this green star polyp's been growing on the back wall and then on the on the uh, outlets there for quite a while. Um, but it was blocking out the light on the outlets, so I so I took those down. Speaking of light, 
Anyone familiar with Red Sea LED 90s? Um, I'm having a problem. It's been going on for months. I've just ignored it, didn't want to deal with it, but now I've got a ticket into Red Sea. I haven't heard it, heard back yet. Um, what, what's going on is these two are grouped together, but the right one is putting out less light. It's hard to see in this video. You might be able to see it. One, one way you can kind of tell though is right up here, you can see the reflection is less on this side than on this side, but this light is putting out less light. But they are grouped together and they're run on the same, they're controlled basically through the app together, not separately. So the numbers are the same as far as what I've got it set to. If you have any ideas or have experienced this, please comment below. Sorry to, uh, but anyway, um, back to what's in this tank. Um, Symphilium right there, doing good. Zoa Garden's doing really good. Uh, Mr. Space Invader there and right here, both doing well, growing. Some mushrooms back there, cabbage leather in the back, that's nothing special. And then my torch area, for the most part now, I'm finally having a little bit of success with torches. This one up here, I did lose a head recently, but um, these ones have grown and done fairly well in the short time that I've had these. These I've all had within the last six months. So um, tips on keeping torches, I'm open to those as well because I've just struggled with those over time. I mean, I've had a torch that started with a couple heads and got to be as big as like a basketball and then just completely died off um, in like a short, short period of time. So tips on that, I would really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, other than that, things are doing good. I didn't really talk about any of the fish in the tanks except for the NEM tank, but I haven't had any losses as far as fish go that I know of that I've noticed. <laughs> Sometimes uh, you forget about a little fish or something and then realize, hey, that thing's gone. But Things have been going good there. They're kind of height. Now they're coming out that I've backed off a little bit. You can see the purple tang. Um, over here too, let's just kind of take a look. You can see some of the fish now that I'm further away from the tank and they're not spooked. I got a yellow tang in there, a purple tang, a purple coal tang with yellow eye. Sailfin, fox face, naso, a couple of clowns, a couple of uh, antheus and a cleaner ras. Um, Six line in there somewhere and Melanaris Ras. Um, we'll go over here quickly to end the video and I'll talk about the fish in this tank as well since we're doing that. Um, you can see the butterfly in there, the pyramid, yellow pyramid, white pyramid, whatever you call it. Um, yellow tang, hippo, leopard ras, uh, Melanaris, a couple of clowns. Got the flame angel and the coral beauty. There's a uh, little uh, Royal Grama down there. Um, I still have five of the, five of the, oh, there's another Royal Grama over here. I forgot I've got two of those. There's a six line over there. Um, got five blue chromis going on and then some shrimp as well. So that's that tank and that's the tour for today. Um, any questions, let me know. Any suggestions for anything? I'm, I'm five to seven years into the saltwater thing now, but I still struggle and I still at times really need help. Um, and so I'm, I'm open to any suggestions from any of you out there that are experts in the saltwater area. We'll do a freshwater update here as well. Possibly maybe you, if I, depending on which one I record and um, upload first. Maybe the freshwater update will have already been seen by the time you're watching this. But anyway, I'll do them around the same time and upload them similar times as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, please go to aquaticsupportsystems.com and check that out. Any traffic to the website helps. And I uh, appreciate you. If you're a new, new person uh, watching this video, hit the subscribe button. Um, and uh, until next time, thanks for watching.